Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's March the 24th, 2015, and this is the Veterans Today Radio News Reports, and I'm your host, Stu Webb, and I have a special guest on tonight, Dr. Preston James. I have Dr. Preston James on this evening. I have uh, uh, Lon Gibby, who's the communications director for for uh, uh, for Leo Wanta, and we're going to have some breaking news tonight uh, from both both of my guests. And uh, with that said, Dr. Preston James, how are you? I'm <clears throat> real good, Stu. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Lon will be joining us here in a minute. I talked to him just before the show, kind of doing a test on his mic. And folks, we've got the. I believe the volume control is all uh, fixed, and in my uh, new computer, it was me. It was me running the thing, so hopefully I'm not blasting your brains out tonight, and uh, we're not having any problems here. Uh, so, so we'll have everything, and here we have Lon Gibby right now, hopefully. Lon, are you there? Yes, I do. How are you? I'm good this evening, and thank you for coming on with us. And I've got Dr. Preston James already on with us, so... We're going to have some fun. So which one of you gentlemen want to start tonight first? Why don't you have Lon go? We've got a lot to hear from him. He's been working real hard with uh, Lee Wanta, and he's he's uh, really handled things well. I, I just can't wait to learn you know, where everything is is going right now. Oh, thank you, Preston. It's good to, good to be able to visit with you and uh, give you an update on our project, what we're working on, and some of the latest uh information you know i have about lee and how he's doing um it's been exciting uh just getting finally to the point where you know we're starting to to bring all of this information together to get the documentary uh ready and the documentary for those of you out there that may not have heard about it it's called eagle one to wanta and eagle one was uh president reagan's uh code name during the Cold War period at the time that we were working hard to bring the Soviet Union down. And, uh, and of course, Wanta is, is Lee Wanta, uh, who is, a, is known as Ambassador Lee Wanta, and he was the secret agent that uh, helped uh, bring down the Soviet Union finan- uh, financially without even firing a shot. That's pretty amazing when you think about the Cold War and all the money that was being spent up to that time period uh, between both our countries, and to be able to finally, you know, put an end to to that arms race and the potential of uh, annihilating, you know, everybody on the earth through a nuclear exchange. So uh, we owe a lot to Lee, don't you think? At this time, you know, James, when you look well, at yeah, ex- actually, we sure do, and and I don't know if the full story will ever be told. Um, as you know, <clears throat> many people have no idea that uh, Lee Wanta uh, had a long, illustrious c- career, not only in law enforcement, but in, in intel. And I, I believe that if his full story was ever told, it would put people at risk now, you know, that, that were in secret roles. So I don't know that we'll ever hear the, the true story. But, but if people did know, and if they knew what you know or what I know, um, which is not everything, um, they would be impressed because uh, of all the major investigations that Lee Wanta was involved in and all his major successes before Ronald uh, Reagan became president and before President Reagan uh, brought him in. President Reagan had his file, which was about a, as thick as three phone books, and he brought him in because of the Lee Wanta's long track record of success. And what most people don't know is that Lee Wanta was... <clears throat> he, he's, a, he's a known genius. His IQ is off the map. It cannot even be accurately tested. He has a photographic memory, and uh, his his abilities were so extraordinary in grade school that he was selected. He was the, they notified the government about him at, in grade school and in high school. He was watched closely. He was brought brought in to work for the for the uh, for law enforcement at 15 years old for the FBI. So that just gives you an idea of the part of the story that we don't know. And uh, but the, ex- the his extraordinary gifts mentally, um, you know, something that really shocked me when I found out about it. Oh, uh, Lon, I would ask you when you're not, you just try to cover your mic because there's a little bit of an echo because you're on the phone. Oh, okay, okay thank Skype you. Where you can mute it. But you uh, bet. So, but go ahead, go ahead, Lon. I was going to say that uh, Lee's talents and uh, that he's been blessed with. 
Uh, if you look at his ability to remember details, uh, he has a photographic memory, and that's one of the reasons why they they really uh, wanted to bring him into the uh, in, to work in the, in this particular capacity as a secret agent because his ability to remember so well every single detail. But I think even more important than that was his character. Uh, I have to say, after having the opportunity to work with Lee and actually have had him here uh, with the, here at our facility and uh, for a period of almost a week, got to know him pretty well, I looked him in the eye uh, every day for about 18 hours. I'd say he's a person that has uh, a, a character. Uh, he's honest. You know, he's trying to do what he was mandated to do uh, by uh, President Reagan. And he was carrying out those uh, the mandate that he had is still uh, he's still working on that same mandate. That's what's interesting about the whole story is that it's not over. It's happening every day, uh, still in progress, and hopefully uh, will give us all some hope once we learn what his mission is and what he's trying to do. And uh, in behalf of uh, President Reagan, in behalf of every American. Well, that's right. I think the one thing about him, yes, when you mentioned his character, that that uh, many, many times there were there were numerous sophisticated attempts to compromise Lee Wanta money before he had made so much money, um, women, everything, everything was tried on him, and absolutely nothing worked. There is no way to get to him, and of course. We know the reason for that. The reason is he's a very uh, he he has very strong Christian values and morals. He he believes that he has to answer to God someday, and he's living accordingly. And that makes him bulletproof. And no matter what they tried to do to to knock him off track or whatever, all has failed. And even to this day, it's all failed, Lon. It has. I mean, they they try. Uh, they're still trying to discredit him every uh, every way they possibly can. And of course, they've kept, he's had a, he lived a very humble life. Uh, if you consider somebody that would be uh, the, considered the, the richest person, probably at least in our country, uh, for sure, uh, that that has that kind of resources behind him. Uh, you know, he has been uh, his goal has been to do what's right for the country, and so it, it, they forced him to live a very humble life. He's been under a lot of stress. Every day he's uh, working towards the goal of, you know, getting these resources that have been, these funds that have been uh, what they call converted, but we really know that it was stolen, but he uses the term converted, but they took his funds and uh, and those funds have been used uh, to prop up uh, uh, banks and derivatives and used for other purposes and not what they were intended to be used for. And so... Uh, that's what's frustrating, but he has kept true to that, and he he just keeps you know he's a hard worker. I'll tell you, I'm amazed at just how committed he is and how he's willing to to do what it takes to get this accomplished and uh, and get the country back to where it needs to be. Well, he's the richest man here in the United States with that kind of cash. I don't even think any of the Illuminati boys have got thirty two trillion dollars, and between that and the gold that sparked now, yeah, that was uh, you know so. <laughs> and since he is in control of the money, that's a good thing. It's going to be a good thing for the United States of America when he implements and it, it's implemented, hopefully soon. I'm Louis well, Louis exactly. Smith. You know, you know, you know, Stu. The thing is, is that um, I know from my many discussions and interviews with him that these funds are earmarked to go back into our economy. Um, he wants to create jobs. Wants to create new business. Uh, Businesses, of course, he's been totally committed to a high-speed rail system that we should have had years ago uh, that still hasn't been built. And uh, and so that's the exciting thing about it is that he's you know he he has a, he's committed to these funds going back into it's not something that he um, you know it's not a, it's not something that he's trying to keep to himself. You know this money is earmarked to go back into. Uh, helping our country move forward, and and to make generate more money. This 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 man knows how to generate money. I can tell you that because he knows the financial systems of the world. He knows how 
currencies work between countries. He knows uh, banking, and you know he can generate. He can use this money to really generate more money. That's the beautiful thing about it, and the way he's going to uh, apply it. And of course, uh, we need uh, money to help you know uh, back up our country. You know that he's willing to pay his taxes on that money, which is worth a lot. So that's that's the other side. Want. I think uh, people, you know, for the background, I've known Leo since 1997, came in, came across him at the same time that Gene Tatum and I both did, matter of fact, uh, through our good friend Bill McCoy, he's now dead, uh, for exposing Oklahoma City, and he was a former Inspector General of the Pentagon, former spook himself, or Assistant Inspector General, but that's how I got to know about Leo and, and Leo's purpose and what he was to do, and and he was operational. I mean, the guy should be commended for what he has done. He broke down the, uh, or broke the, should we say, disposed of the Cold War. Um, uh, made it no longer to where we had that with Russia, between Russia and the United States, which, which was all fictitious. He broke down the Berlin Wall, should we say, uh, broke the Russian ruble in order to do it, and uh, did a lot of things. But uh, this was Reagan's plan, and uh, he did a lot more. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you know, you know, Stu. What's interesting is uh, he speaks of of what he did as bringing down the Soviet Union as opposed to bringing down Russia, because his his goal was never to uh, cause uh, a lot of uh, pain to the Russian people, because uh, he loves he loves the Russian people, and just like he does people all over the world. Uh, his goal was to take down what uh, Reagan had named the Soviet Empire, which is what had. Uh, was considered uh, the Soviet Union was considered the evil empire, basically, and so he's very quick to to clarify any time you talk about that time period. There's, there's a difference between Russians and a difference between Soviets, and uh, he'll he'll be the first to tell you that. Okay, but I, we also know that, and he's he's been on my shows in the past, and. And, folks, some of those shows, we're cleaning them up, the archives, because we're on another network, so we'll have them back up on my network and uh, here on uh, uh, Veterans Today. And someone's telling me my sound, uh, my speaker's down just a little bit, so I'm going to bring my volume up a hair a bit. Hopefully that's going to solve the problem without getting too much echo. But uh, uh, he paid Gorbachev, what was it, $10 billion? He was told to yeah. offer him $10 billion? <clears throat> Well, this is this is uh, that is going to be told in our film. It's never been told before. Is the process that it took to bring you know the Soviet Union finally to a close? And uh, we talk about this experience that he had of actually going uh, personally to meet with uh, Gorbachev and uh, the amount that uh, Gorbachev was willing to. To act, that he asked for in order for him to to step away from his position and as the uh, man, the man for in charge of everything was uh, ten billion dollars, which was to go to his. Um, I apparently went to his uh, a trust that he had of some kind, and where I'm sure where it is today. But but that when a lot of people when they hear that, I've heard complaints and say, "Wow, we shouldn't give." That much money away, or this and that. But did you ever stop to think about the the cost of uh, the Cold War and the potential for destruction of so many lives? And when you consider that the Cold War was estimated to cost about eight trillion dollars over a period of time, I mean, this was a small amount to make this happen in the way it it, it, it happened. So yeah, Lee was the man. Uh, I read the documents, and, uh, and and I know that he he was the man that that met with Gorbachev directly and personally on our behalf, and I uh, was able to negotiate that. Now you've got quite a few things coming out in the movie that uh, people don't even know about things that Leo's never even talked about, <clears throat> and uh, Leo, I know that probably wanted to be on the show tonight, but he's taking care of business, folks, for this country, so therefore he couldn't be here. And there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. Maybe you can talk about some of them. Um, maybe you can't, uh, Lon. So I'm going to kind of turn the mic back over to you and, and let you go that direction. Well, sure. Well, I'd be happy to talk about it. And 
Um, there's a lot to this story, just so everybody understands that we could um, probably produce a, a, a weekly TV series about this for five years straight and still not run out of content. That's, I mean, and as a documentarian, I've just been blown away at the amount of uh, content that there is in, um, in good uh, documented material that, you know, can be backed up uh, to tell this story. But part of it is interesting. If you go back, if, if you go back in history, part of this story actually goes back to the Federal Reserve uh, when uh, back to 1913, when President Wilson authorized the forming of the Federal Reserve uh, Act, which started that organization. And um, since that time. Uh, this group, uh, the, the co Congress did a congressional study uh, in 1976 about the Federal Reserve, and they referred to the Federal Reserve as a club, basically like a, a, a club of people. And in a book that uh, we have researched that has information about the Federal Reserve, it's, not, it's called The Secrets of the Federal Reserve, written by a man, Eustace Smolin. And this book was written, by the way, uh, in 1951, was released. And then it was updated uh, in 1985, 81, and 85. But the interesting thing about this book is that it identifies the entire process of how the Federal Reserve was formed and uh, why and who was behind it. And when you, when you look into it... Um, you realize, and, and, and even the Congressional Committee that did a study on the Federal Reserve in 1996, they said it was a club system. Uh, and this club system basically was made up of, of uh, companies. Um, it mentions many different companies that were involved, banks. Uh, these were the ones that were the voting members of this organization and people from other countries that actually, um, you know, had a say in how the, uh, how the money was uh, t handled and the control that was administered over it. So part of the story is, you know, the Federal Reserve, uh, because in, in order to understand the Federal Reserve, you have to go back quite a ways, even before 1913, what led up to the forming of it. But um, it's true that as part of the story is that uh, President Kennedy himself, you know, was concerned about the power of the Federal Reserve and uh, was wanted to eliminate Federal Reserve notes and go with, you know, uh, you know certificates or, or dollars that were backed up, you know, by gold rather than paper. And uh, some of the issues relating to his um, assassination and also... Um, some of the other folks that were assassinated, and then, of course, Reagan himself was nearly assassinated twice, uh, we, we know of, and uh, some other events that, no, that some people don't know about. But uh, obviously, uh, anybody that, you know, was contesting this organization, you know, was in jeopardy, even the presence of the United States. So it was very powerful. So... Uh, in this particular study that was done uh, by the Congress in 1976 about the Federal Reserve, this is the last words in the, in the book. It says, in summary, the Federal Reserve directors are apparently representatives of a small elite group which dominates much of our economic life of this nation. End of congressional report. So how, you can't really talk about what you want to without telling the story of the Federal Reserve, which, again, was Reagan's goal was to uh, abolish this type of system. And uh, there's been other people since him who have been working towards that end. Doc, you, uh, sorry, I had my mic muted. I'm playing with the volume controls here. I'm hoping I'm loud enough. I no, you didn't. Sound. Uh, you may be hearing me loud enough. I hope everyone else is, because I'm seeing my gauges here, and I'm learning how to play with things, folks. 
we've been off the charts with professional mic and all kinds of things along and it's just uh, they didn't work out and it's easier and simple with the with the other items but anyway uh doc you got any questions you want to throw up here at the lawn over well i i wonder if is there any information you can t give us about eagle one to want about the movie like uh how long it will be or if it'll be in segments or when when the approximate release date might be or well, it, the, uh, the, it's a feature film documentary. In other words, it's about one hour and 50 minutes is what we're projecting it to be. Um, and our goal is to have it completed and release it around the first of the year of next year. Uh, we have a lot more work to do and interviews to do uh, with some key people. There's a lot of folks that are finally feeling comfortable that they can actually talk about some of these issues it's been a scary thing for a lot of them to uh, or they haven't wanted to come forward but now that there's so much information coming out you know that your, your organization veterans today has been putting out a lot of information and other organizations that uh some of these uh and of course in mainstream media even we're starting to hear more uh People are start finally starting to, to, to realize that they need to come forward and talk about uh, what they observed uh, during this time period and also uh, not be afraid to tell the truth. And um, so that's that's making it possible for us to, to move this project along a lot quicker as we get more support from people that previously had not been willing to discuss the subject matter. Subject matter, again, is very sensitive, and it does involve, you know, uh, obviously some criminal activities and people that are uh, have done some things that that uh, have affected our, you know, our our country. So uh, it's an it's an interesting story from that standpoint. And yeah, I would say, you know, that um, our goal when we get it done. Uh, do and, and Preston is to release it first of all as a theatrical release so that it could be seen you know on the large screen and then um, and then of course to release it for television and also to release it as a um, uh, on DVD and other formats as well Blu-ray so I hope that helps give you a little yeah, bit yeah that, that's good information though I've noticed that there's a change in the degree to which people are starting to talk. Is it that they've gotten old? Um, is it they, that they sense that that uh, the regime is losing its power? Is it because of the uh, the economic changes with all the uh, new currencies, the BRICS nations, and all these things that are weakening the American regime, which has really been infiltrated and run by Israelis and and British? What exactly is the, what has changed? Do you, do you know that, Lon? Well, you know, I think with all the uh, social media, you know, the Internet, a lot of things have opened up more information. And what's happened, I, I believe, is that people are, are so confused because they're getting information, uh, opposing information, uh, you know, from the same sources. And it's, it's like uh, there's so much opportunity to manipulate people because of all the you know, there's so much information that people just can't. They don't know what to believe. To be honest with you, they they're frustrated. They they're looking for something that's 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 uh, got its substance to it. That's true. And you know, the kind of information that we that we've been able to put together, we're putting out. I think a lot of people are recognizing is uh, it's timely. It's need the, the information needs to get out now. Uh, no, a lot of people didn't understand a lot of the things that have gone on in the past, and um, so I think I think the climate is the timing is good for uh, for this documentary and for other similar stories that need to be told. Um, and and people uh, there also I think there's a certain amount of fear out there that. Um, People have still. There's a lot of fear because of all the mixed information that's, that we're getting. The information that we're getting is coming from uh, some of these sources. Uh, we know that it's coming from that that 
the people that are putting out this information are walking both sides of the fence. In other words, a lot of them are, they're calculating that, uh, what they need to do to get this information out. You know, they want to tell, make sure people get, uh, they're not, it's not, they're not doing it to get both sides of the story, they're doing it to manipulate, you know, the, the audience. And so that's why we have a media that's been kind of, as we know, um, I've talked about this before in that public gate uh, article, you know, we put out, and we have another uh, article about that coming out. But the media has been, uh, it's, it's like been winning the lottery for the media lately because they make so much money off of the, all the PAC money for the candidates, and they're busy. It doesn't matter whether it's good for our country or not. If they're getting paid, you know, they, they have a tendency to to not to do do what what media was supposed to intended to do before, and that's to be a spokesman, you know, uh, a check for our government, uh, the free free media. And it's supposed to be we checks and balances, and they're nothing but a bunch of whores is all they become, Lon. Let's well, face it. We got the yeah. Israeli Mossad working one end of this alternative media, so-called media. People like Alex Jones that. You know they've they've proven this recently. U.S. intelligence has, and uh, Glenn Beck and and uh, all these other stooges at the Fox News network and the, all the Israelis, and then you have all the main networks that are all just controlled and owned by the Illuminati as well, which is the same group. We've got the Khazari Mafia and we have the Bush Crime Syndicate, and they've taken over the media in this country and they've taken over the Congress, the Senate, and everything else, but. There's no place you can get the truth like you can on Veterans Today and right here on this radio network. Well, that's right. And you guys are, you know, you and and, uh, and there's a, there are some other ones that are good like you that are are interested in informing people, giving them information. Um, unfortunately, even organizations like your own can be manipulated by people that plant stories that are inaccurate that have to be checked out. And so, so I think we all work hard to try to improve the way that we report the news. Uh, the news needs to be, um, the sources where the information came from need to be checked out, and and we need to try to be as accurate as we can. But it, nowadays, people just put anything out they get across their desk. And a lot of that stuff's planted, as you know. Well, I have a question for you, Lon. Now, yeah. um, we we know that there um, have been people that have uh, threatened Lee Wanta and uh, conspired against him to harm him. But could you explain um, what knowledge that that Lee Wanta has that is deemed such a threat to the existing system of criminals that have hijacked our government? why they're so afraid about him. It isn't just the money that he has. What else is it? And and who are the entities that are so threatened by by the truth that he holds? Explain any of that. Sure, I'll, I'll try to. It's, it's pretty... Uh, there's a lot to that question because <clears throat> there's there's people that, um, you know, that are in power that or are part of the Puppet Master program and again, for those of you that don't know about what a puppet master is, is that we found out through our research and some of the some of the uh, people that have, that we were able to get information from that they even call themselves puppet masters, meaning they consider themselves ability to control things like just like a puppet master would. So these puppet masters are in established in all parts of our society. I and mean, if you look around, even on a county level, of course, you go to Cook County in Chicago, you know, you'll see some of that. And you'll see it in mean, almost any county. You'll see it in cities. You'll see, uh, you'll see it at the congressional level right up to, to the federal level. And, and then it's way beyond that. It's much higher. So what we're talking about is Lee's knowledge of the highest level of puppet mastery. Okay, these would be the these would be the folks that are at the very highest level that control uh, trillions and trillions of dollars. So it's money based, but it's also um, uh, based on people not really wanting to know what they really do. If people understood what what some of these folks do, that 
that you think are respectable, they would be shocked. And I've been very disappointed uh, and just uh, absolutely disgusted by some of the things I've learned since I started working on this documentary. I mean, in what I've heard, not just from Lee, but through some of the other documents and things that I've, I've come across. And it's really sad to me that these people um, are worried about, you know, control. They don't really care about their fellow men. You know, they, to them, reminded, reminded me a lot of, um, I went to Russia in 1988 when the Soviet Union was, was uh, still up and running. And I worked on a documentary there, and I had a chance to travel across the country and uh, 7,000 miles and film uh, a lot of, of just everyday people. And in the process, I learned that the Russian people are really good people. Um, they're they're just like anybody else anywhere in the world. They they love they love their children. They're, they're good family people. They try you know. There's but it's amazing to me that that. The, what they had to live under because people above them were, were these puppet masters were able to control uh, the economy, they were able to control their lives and their freedoms were taken away. So uh, what I've learned is that at a very high level, uh, beyond what most of us realize, there is a, a movement that, that wants to control uh, people. And, and, you know, when you, they want to take away people's agency. You know, agency is the ability to make a choice. And I believe, as our founding fathers, that's a God-given right. We should, we, have, we should have the right to make our own choices and decisions and not have them dictated to us or, or forced upon us like we face now. And uh, even more and more, we're seeing more of our freedoms go. So these folks that are at, the, at this level... Uh, they're scared of losing control, and they're also scared of being found out who they really are. And so that's why we have so many uh, issues, and Lee has been um, it's amazing. He's still alive after all the threats and potential situations he's been caught in, which, I, you know, which we are going to talk about in our documentary. I'm just amazed at what he's been through. And... Uh, but I'm just telling you that they, these folks are are uh, wanting to protect themselves, protect their, and they 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 do have a certain amount of disregard, just like the people in history. You got Mao's, the Mao's of the world, the Stalin's of the world. Uh, you've got Hitler's. Um, these folks, the, the characteristic between about all of them is that they don't seem to care about uh, the masses. I mean, in other words, people are expendable. And uh, that's what worries me about uh, the mentality of some of these people they, 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 that are in control, is they don't care about, the, about the, their fellow men. And so, uh, but on the good side is we, there's a lot of positive uh, forces working for good as we know if you believe in God then you realize that God will win so that's the good news where is all this heading do you see some uh, day of justice coming for these people that have threatened uh, Lee Wanta and taken action against him and <clears throat> and conspired against him it just seems to me that the, the, these uh, are such obvious crimes these people should be in jail they should have been arrested for major felonies well and that's what they're afraid of because in a lot of them uh, you know they have a legacy they want to leave they want the history to tell it differently than what it really was and of course that's really frightening for them that, that their legacy would be destroyed or people's perceptions of who they were or who they are would be changed and so yes it's a, it's a very difficult thing for them to handle and uh, but I, I need to tell, tell everybody this about Lee is that um, he is not a vindictive person he's not his whole goal isn't uh, revenge you know we have a lot of people that's all they can think about is how they're going to uh, he's a very forgiving person. He, he does. He, you'd be amazed at how he's been able to put things behind him and just move forward. He wants to move forward. He doesn't want 
to get bogged down in the past where it just totally destroys. You know, if somebody is still in on revenge and and going after somebody that did them wrong, it becomes a cancer to themselves. I mean, as you know, and uh, that could actually just do more damage. And, and fortunately, Lee hasn't let it destroy him. And, I, and that's one of the interesting things about the story. And he wants to move forward. Uh, he believes that these people do need to be accountable. Uh, they do need to uh, be, um, justice needs to be served. But he doesn't believe it's his job to uh, go after every one of these folks and make sure that they get, that they get punished for what they did to him. He's not, he's not that kind of person. I'll be the hanging judge when Gordon Duff becomes president, and I'll see to it that they're taken to the hole and shot in the head for what they did to Leo. How's that? And Doc's <laughs> going to be the he's going to be the new U.S. prosecutor that will be prosecuting all these stooges. Well, you know, and that's you know that will be it, it takes you know we need good prosecutors, so you know he'll be able to uh, do what the law says needs to be done. So, but. Um, and that's, I mean, I'm sure there'll be, there'll be plenty of, of people like uh, Gordon out there that'll be real anxious to see that happen. But don't you uh, think the real, the real issue here, <clears throat> it's not theory, it's not speculation. What Lee Wanta has are facts, truth. The, and the truth carries a tremendous, um, load with it. Uh, it, it, it changes people's hearts, it changes people's minds, it brings them back into reality. So it seems to me the important message of your film would have to be centered around what really happened and the truth that has been denied the American public. Absolutely. The truth is uh, the American public is going to be absolutely blown away when they realize the truth. And that's that's because they haven't heard any of this on the news. I mean, the news media has not been right in giving them the honest truth. Okay? So this is going to resonate <laughs> When this gets out, I mean, people will really well understand history a lot better, and they will, they're going to be very disappointed, I know, in some of the people that they trusted and believed were working in their interest, and then they're going to find out that they're not. That's the problem. And it's going to, it's definitely going to cause a lot of anger, and, um, but again, we're not sure, I, 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 I personally don't think anger is the answer to resolving the problem. No, but there's got to be, but justice needs to be served. But the I'll be happy to serve justice on their heads. <laughs> well, you know, I got the I got the Christian mentality, but at the same time, I have this mentality. There's some people that are so evil they got to be put down like dogs. That's just well, the bottom line. Well, they are, and you know, God has a way of doing that. You know. Um, and he uses, obviously, he uses other, uses people to carry out his punishments sometimes and throughout history. And, and of course, he had it with himself. And so, it's really, I'm sure that there will be justice. I mean, we're told if you are a Christian, you believe in the, in the Christ, teach the Bible, that, hey, they're not going to get away with it, with it. I mean, there's to be, I mean, it's gone on a long time. Eventually, justice will be served. Okay, is it true that um, uh, Lee has an extensive plan to uh, completely revitalize America and reindustrialize it? And that if this is not some pie in the sky thing. This is based on real experience, real economic knowledge, and something that, that would definitely work. Do you want to go into that? Just explain. Yeah, no, I'd love to. You know, that's a really, and again, this positive part of the story, and that is uh, Lee, Lee has an engineering background. He has a number of degrees, by the way, and um, he's uh, brilliant when it comes to the economy. And one of the things he recognized uh, years and years ago was the importance of a high-speed rail system. And look, look what the Japanese have accomplished. You know, I really enjoyed the opportunity to travel to Japan. I did a video called How to Do Business in Japan Without Losing Your Face. And I, in the 90s, I went over there and traveled um, all throughout Japan and filmed the stories how to, Japan, how to do business with the Japanese. And, 
their rail system was just, I mean, totally amazing how they were able to move millions of people around safely, you know, uh, every day. And we, we are so far behind now because we, and China's built a rail system that I was in China a couple of years ago and I was impressed with their, their facilities. We are way, way, way behind. And Lee knows how to get us caught up. And he can do it quickly if, if, uh, if he's able to have control of, or at least have the ability to move forward with some of his business ideas. Okay, Lon, is it, uh, is it true that uh, Lee has knowledge of high level macroeconomics? He knows how to create a strong economy in any country. He knows all the components of it. He knows how to structure the monetary system so that it's honest money. Do you want to go over some of that? Because my understanding yeah. is that he, my, I've been told by other people that he's the top expert on macroeconomics in the world. Do you want to ex- go into some of that? Oh, absolutely. You know, he understands how the economic system on the country works. He understands the banking uh, system and how it should be operating properly, not propped up by derivatives and, you know, Ponzi-type schemes like we have in our country, and we have in other parts of the world. So Lee wants to implement a, a financial system that operates as it should, and it's based on honesty, truth, Transparency and transparency, you know, is a great word. Uh, it says a lot, but it can be used the wrong way. You know, uh, some people, if you think about how transparent, <coughs> um, some people are so transparent you can never see what they're really doing. And uh, and what I mean by that is that they they really never show their cards. They're and we have people like that. But, but no, Lee's, off, Lee's plan is to, is to build on sound economic principles. And I, and I guarantee you, he's an expert in that. Um, he's, he understands. Uh, and they, they've been asking him questions for a long time. He gets um, calls from a lot of uh, well-known uh, people in our country as well as all, from China. He uh, gets calls from Singapore. The Russians even contact him for help. He is very brilliant when it comes to understanding econ- what to do to make the economy boom. Um, he knows that, that business is important at all levels, including small business in America, and why small business uh, provides two thirds of all of our uh, in, employment for two thirds of our people in our country. The small business needs to be nurtured. We have to have access to capital. They have to have access to uh, good. Uh, they have to have their credit protected properly, and and all those issues he really does understand. Because I I've, I've spent a lot of time visiting with him on that subject. Uh, you've talked to uh, you're the movie that you're making about him, Lon. Um, I mean, you're going into all the details. One of the things that Ronald Reagan had put on his commission plate, should we say, to do was to bust the Federal Reserve. Isn't that true? That, yeah, that is. That's, that's true. So, in reality, the Federal Reserve, as soon as BRICS takes effect totally in the next 90 days, Russia nationalized last Thursday their banks, and they're going to be part of the BRICS system backed by gold or oil commodities, proven reserves. Like 101 countries have been approved, but the U.S. was rejected because we use Federal Reserve money, fake money, money printed out of thin air, and the whole world's been burned by them with this mortgages and derivatives, the same bankers, and uh, we have not been accepted. So when BRICS really kicks in effect in the next this next 90 days, and all these European countries and, and London and, and Russia and everybody are up and running, our money's going to be worth possibly 10% on the world market of what it is today. Now, yeah. Doesn't this sort of fit in the time frame of, of what's going to happen without speaking too much? We can kind of insinuate and hint with the amount of gold that he has. Yeah, you, that's, a, that's, you hit it right on the hit. This is the reason why we need, uh, we want to right now to finally be given 
you know, the opportunity to move forward with his with his funds need to be restored back to him, and he needs to be able to move forward with his plan, the WANTA plan. And the WANTA plan would help us to be able to make transition back to where we need to be to uh, and, and to get our dollar back the way that he had planned for that. And we don't have to give in and, and let all of our enemies, by the way. And these folks are... They're not so much enemies as they are people that are just totally frustrated with the Federal Reserve, this group, this club I spoke of earlier. And they are looking any way they can to get out from underneath that. So Lee is able to unite people and bring them together as opposed to divide. So that's why I'm really pushing, doing what I can do to tell a story because we need a somebody that can unite <coughs> countries together to work in harmony as opposed to trying to divide everybody uh, and create the scenario that we face now. You can't blame them for wanting to set up that brick bank because they're tired of being manipulated and, and um, controlled, you know, and it's not so much they want to beat up America, but a lot of people interpret it like they're trying to destroy us. Uh, they need us just as much as we need them. They need our country to be successful. So it isn't going to do them any good if our country goes, goes completely down. Because the American economy, as you know, is, is we got an incredible uh, economy. It's very resilient. It can bounce back quickly. We're entrepreneurial. Um, we create about $17 trillion a year uh, right just with our own business we do and uh, that needs to be preserved it wouldn't do anybody good to see that go now and Lee understands that he's working really hard to, to make sure that doesn't happen Elon could you please explain um, Lee's personal philosophy I, I was a little shocked when he first told me that um, <clears throat> when he was uh, negotiating uh, with the Soviet Union uh, an end to the Cold War that he had two options. He was at a cross at a, at a crossroads. He could have used the hammer approach and completely decimated them and mopped up all the assets inside Russia and crushed the country forever, or he could have gone the peaceful route and 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 made uh, trade partners out of them. And what he chose to do was to set up a solution that was based on a win-win situation, and said, "Look, we have to work together for the future. There's enough prosperity that we can create for all of us." And he actually negotiated a secret agreement most people never heard of it. it was an agreement of cooperation i've seen a copy of it and and it was yeah. it was a brilliant deal because what it did was um there, there was an agreement we will not mess with any of your countries that border you and you do the same for us and it's going to be a hands-off policy as far as you know putting in missiles along each other's borders and all these provocative things and we are going to try to work together to trade and instead of going toward war we're going to go back the other way toward peace we got to stop this cold war type thinking we have to start thinking on how do we build the economies in our countries and that was the whole philosophy of it and it was it was a complete reversal here days before uh, generals on both sides wanted to try their new nuclear weapons they we had crazy general both ways reagan knew it and he knew that he had to come up with some creative way just like jack kennedy did and and uh lee wanta was able to negotiate a win-win situation that overnight it was almost overnight from what he told me that transformed these two countries from being in each other's throat ready to do complete launches on each other would have been world war three to to uh, people that were willing to sit down, talk, and resolve problems and trade. You want, or you want to go over yeah. what you know about that? Because it's really, it's astounding, really, if you think about it. You bet. Well, you know, just remember that the name of the operation was called Operation Still Point. Okay, in Still Point, they, they use that name because the, the whole idea of bringing something to a still, still calm water was was what he, they were all about. They were trying to bring this nuclear race, which was totally out of control, to a still position. So Operation Still Point is part of the strategy behind it. Uh, Lee was instrumental in creating a document you know, called the General Agreement of Cooperation. The General Agreement of Cooperation was, uh, you know, once uh, Gorbachev stepped down, Yeltsin came in, 
the Russian Federation was born. What good would it have done to us, to us to put them in bombing to try to beat them up anymore? Their economy was was destroyed. The, the ruble was was gone. They were they needed our help to rebuild in a democratic way because that's what we've always well that's what we always wanted. We wanted to get rid of, of communism, and we wanted to get rid of that. So it would have been absolutely crazy for us not to come up with a way to help them get back on their feet. And they're not the evil empire at that point, remember. And so we, so Lee, he worked really hard and with President Reagan. They came up with a general agreement of cooperation. They were signed by the Russian Federation. Lee wants a signature is on it. And uh, many of our top government officials were uh, signed in behalf of our government. And this agreement, by the way, um, nobody's talking about it because and I don't know why it hasn't been pulled out yet, but somebody is. We're going we're gonna to publish it, by the way, in about a week. And you'll be able to read, read Lee's version, which is the marked-up version that uh, he has, uh, with, but it is signed, and you can read it for yourself. But this agreement was finalized, okay? And the problem is we are not following that agreement now, and I'll explain that in a minute, what's going on. This general agreement of cooperation said, basically what you, you said, Preston, a little bit earlier here, that we would not interfere with uh, the Soviet Union's local neighbors. It'd be like, you know, it'd be like us if, if we were in their position, them saying, hey, we're not going to mess with Canada or Mexico. You know, you, you know, continue to do your business with them. And, and the obvious thing is that the Russians wanted to sell, you know, their oil. That's one of the things in the economy that one of the, the high points that they had is they had the ability to produce uh, oil and natural gas, and why not, you know, be able to sell it to their neighbors. And so we agreed not to mess around with uh, with their neighbors and, you know, and try to take over their economy and monopolize that. And we, all, and we gave them $50 billion, according to the agreement. The copy I have, it says we gave them $50 billion dollars. To help them get off, the, get back up off the ground, and uh, we helped them, and we agreed not to mess around with uh, their local neighbors. Well, then let's come back to 2013. We have a, uh, and here's one of the issues that uh, Lee has, and and I also would like to point out is that we have a lot of people in our government that are are appointed to positions. They weren't elected. They have no, um, no the vote, nobody voted them in, but yet they've been appointed to these high-level positions. Well, uh, one named Victoria Newland, uh, in speaking to a group in 2013, who is over uh, our foreign policy and what we're doing over that part of the world, she boasted that we had given five billion dollars to help Ukraine, you know, to stay focused and, you know, uh, to develop their uh, economy and, and to help them, you know, uh, be able to work with the European group and the U.S. But actually, nobody seems to be able to explain where that $5 billion was, was actually spent, okay? Uh, in other words, it's very possible from what I can determine, again, I have some information about this, but it's very possible we may have been the actual country that funded the coup that's been responsible for 6,000 uh, people's deaths up to this point. It's ruined our relationship with the Soviet Union, or excuse me, with Russia, and brought the Cold War back to life. That's a great way to spend $5 billion, isn't it, to destabilize an area. If you go back and on the history of the Federal Reserve, it's all about destabilizing parts of the world so that they can generate more money through the, the industrial military complex. And they can also control where they get their fuel and a lot of other things. So that's, that's the issue we're facing right now and why the general agreement of cooperation needs to be out in front of everybody's eyesight and to be to understand what we agreed to do. And at the same time, there's people in Russia that 
are using that uh, as an excuse to, you know, save a rattle and, and to maybe even start a war against us. They're wrong in, in targeting the American public who has no knowledge of what these folks have done in our behalf, and we didn't ask them to do it. You understand what I'm saying? Well, Sharon, I think it's Im- important yeah. to, to, to uh, note that... Uh, uh, Victoria Newland was a, you know, the Assistant Secretary of State that funneled this money. Um, you have to look at her family connections and her connections to Israel. And basically, she's just been functioning as an Israeli stooge doing espionage on on uh, uh, the Likudas party and on Netanyahu's part. And uh, and and their goal is to totally destabilize the whole Mid East. Um, for some crazy reason, and not only that, to de- destabilize Ukraine and make Ukraine their new homeland because uh, they've been instructed uh, by experts that Israel is done within 10 years. Uh, Henry Kissinger said that. Other people have said that. Because of the apartheid situation, they believe that it's only a matter of time. All the European countries are going to divest. The same thing is going to happen to Israel. It happened to South Africa. And and the strange thing is, Lon, is that Israel was the main one that was harassing South Africa over its apartheid, claiming civil rights. That's how they really manipulated the United States, through pushing for civil rights and, and, uh, and, and, and freedom for pornographers and all these various things. But the bottom line is... This aggression uh, in the Ukraine is totally um, a byproduct of Israeli espionage in America and the dual citizens and the dupes and the traitors that have 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 uh, been tools of Israel. Now the problem comes is, like you said, the the every uh, country of the world that has nuclear weapons has some crazy generals that want to test them out. As you probably have heard. The Russians have some very advanced neutron weapons. They're called they're they're not city busters anymore. The, the old S nineteen and S twenty war multi merv warheads. They've all been updated. They they got rid of most of the city busters. They only use those for uh, military targets. What they have now are neutron bombs and other more sophisticated bombs that electronic bombs that will stop a person's heart or freeze their brain and cause death from that. So they can go in and attack the United States and then. Um, once it's depopulated from these anti-personnel weapons, then none of the buildings are harmed, none of the infrastructure is harmed. They can just go in and take over. Now, that's what China's working on, too. We have some of those, too. But the problem is is that the Russian people now are, are getting increasingly angry at the United States. They see, they see the United States as a, as a puppet of Israel. And if, if we want to short-circuit this process, we have to start prosecuting these Israeli espionage groups like APAC that own our politicians and funnel this money from the Federal Reserve, which is basically a Kazarian mafia front, uh, which also uses Israel as its main action agent. We have to decouple from all this Kazarian mafia and Israeli influence and make it clear to the rest of the world that we honor our agreements, such as the the agreement of cooperation that Lee wants to negotiate on behalf of our government. And unless we do that, I see a real danger Line that we could get into a World War III situation. Oh, we, we're so close right now. It's unbelievable. And it's scary that they have people, non-elected people, appointed to these positions that have such power that they could be doing stuff like this or promoting uh, their ideas without the American public's understanding or approval. And uh, that's why, it, and it's unfortunate that, you know, the executive branch of our Government is is uh, made up of of, of of some of these folks that have been uh, they they have uh, been uh, blackmailed or they they're part of a group that that they they're controlled. They got into office because a lot of money was spent in their behalf. Some of them and they they can't do anything about it. But we do have some you know now we do have some good elected officials in there that I believe. You know, are starting to speak up, and they're 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 starting to expose this, and we need them to step forward and be leaders because Phil. we can't accept uh, people making these kind of decisions about destabilizing areas of the world without uh, the American people uh, uh, blessing on that, and we're we're not blessing that type of behavior. We don't that. You know, it's it's wrong to be destabilizing somebody's economy for our own selfish interest, and uh, it's wrong to uh, to give arms to people that are actually killing uh, innocent people. 
and, and, and endorsing that. And so we got a real uh, situation of, uh, of people that are serving two masters. They're on both sides of the fence. They're totally comfortable with, you know, funding, uh, you know, arms that they know is going towards groups that have terrorist uh, ability. And uh, that's got to be exposed. I mean, it needs to be checked right away because you understand, if you look at the whole story of the Federal Reserve since 2013 and all the different wars and, and rumors of wars and activities that are taking place, uh, regional wars and wars within countries, uh, they like that. It works right into their favor. That's what they, and, and, and why, and people say, well, why do they like that? Well, uh, when, when we're busy dealing with these type of issues, we forget about the folks that uh, made these decisions. There, you know, so the, the heat's off them, and we're worrying about protecting our families and protecting our country instead of prosecuting these people, finding out, getting them out of power, and getting back to our American constitutional ways, you know, which is not to do this type of behavior. This is not right. I think it's also important to discuss a little of the background that um, um, it's really important to know that Lee Want is not anti-Israel or anti-China or anti-Russian uh, Federation. Actually, as you mentioned before, he gets along with all the leaders of the world, and, 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 and a lot of them call him for help. Um, one of the things that interests me the most is that uh, he shared with me one time that he got to be very good friends with Rabin, who was uh, Prime Minister of Israel. And uh, when actually when um, uh, when Lee Wanta was arrested and thrown in, in a Swiss jail at the orders of Bush one, um, after a while, Rabin was the one that came up and personally went in there and took him out of jail and put him on a plane out of the country. And then he was rearrested and t taken to Wisconsin on, on these bogus charges. Bush had ordered that again, which we have now been completely proven to be true twice over. But the bottom line is apparently Rabin had realized uh, and I have to believe that some of this had to come from his discussions with Lee, but he had realized that peace was the only way. There had to be a, a two-state solution. Palestine had to have their own nation, and Israel had to have their own nation. They had, there had to be a major compromise. And, you know, immediately after that, he was murdered because he made a lane change. I have to believe that ha some of that had to do with his relationship with Lee. It seems like all the leaders that Lee has been involved with have all worked together and been changed by their relationship and learned um, things they did not know. Absolutely, uh, Lee has a lot of respect for uh, for Mr. Ravine, and what and it was sad that what happened to him um, after he. I saw the letter that he wrote Lee you know, when Lee was in prison, and uh, the after I also am aware of the efforts he made to make sure that Lee got because he he realized that. Uh, you know, Lee was a, was a good person. I mean, his motives were right. He wasn't out. Uh, he didn't have some hidden agenda. And, you know, Lee was after uh, helping um, follow the mandate he'd been given by President Reagan, which was to eliminate corruption, to to get uh, to operate under the constitutional. Uh, people expect us to live our own constitution, and that it's disappointing to them outside of our country when they see us not following our own rules or the the plan that was set up from our founding fathers. And we start losing respect and people, and so that anger is being channeled at Americans, unfortunately, and it's not us, it's, it happens to be, it's, you know, this elite group of folks that we talked about here today. And, uh, but that could, they, they can bring us to a war very easily if uh, this, if this goes unchecked. And, um, by this continually, continued effort to destabilize certain parts of the world, to take the focus off of them, and also to create income, because wars do create a lot of money. I don't know if you realize this, but, uh, you know, the, there's a lot of money to be made when wars are fought so for certain people. Um, and, in some cases, they don't care about the surplus population. They believe that there, there's a, there's too many people anyway. So a lot of times, uh, I know that sounds pretty cold-hearted, but it seems to be the, uh, the nature of, of in history. We've seen that happen, too, uh, in China and other countries, that there's a disregard for human life. 
Well, that's right. I think there's a couple important things. Uh, I think it's important to talk about Lee Wanta's uh, wishes for mankind. Like he is a great lover of people, and and uh, he, he I know he has a personal vision that he wants to see the day come soon when every single American from every walk of life, every class, could be right out of the worst ghetto in America to the wealthiest place. He wants to see every child coming out of high school that wants a job or that wants to work part-time when they're in college, a job for everybody with no discrimination and have plenty of jobs, plenty of good-paying jobs. He's told me, um, Lon, that, that there is no problem if you know how to do it. If you get the corruption out of government and you get honest banking, that America is the most prosperous country in the world. We have the tremendous natural resources. There is no reason why we cannot have enough money where one parent can work and the other parent can take care of the children raising them. That there is no reason why every single person cannot have a good <laughs> job to live off of. Living wage. And that is, and that is his dream. Do you want to go over that? I was really yeah, you know, oh, he, he has a he has a vision that's really really uh, wholesome and good, and and that is that that he doesn't for one thing. First of all, he doesn't see. I at least he's no color, uh, in a, in a, and I and I and I believe that uh, he he cares about every group of people in our country, Native Americans cares about our African American community, cares about the, the Latinos. He loves people. And he just wants to see us all unify and get to work, for heaven's sakes. Cut the BS and let's get, let's get to work. And he's got a way to do it. He's got a way to get us to get us working. People need to work. Uh, you know, it doesn't help people to give them something for nothing. And this isn't about you know some rich guy that's going to give a bunch of money away to people. Um, this is about creating an environment where people can actually work respectively and get paid for their work. And, uh, and, and, and if people don't want to work, that's their choice, but there are consequences, you know, to, to not being willing to, to, to work like everybody else. We, we, we live, it's just the reality. We all have to work to make a living. It's just part of life. And so there's no free ride with Lee's deal, just so you understand. It's not, a, it's not a deal about how we're going to make billions and, uh, billions and trillions of dollars and just give it out to people. That's not what this is about. It's about creating jobs. It's about you know, people having a respectable opportunity and a fair opportunity <coughs> to get an education, to be able to get the access to the latest, you know, technology, robotics, all the stuff that, that, that you know, that is helping our future move forward, uh, get into uh, in, new energy sources, uh, new forms of communication. It's all about developing and creating jobs for everybody in the area they want to go into. And if they're willing to work hard and uh, pay the price because you don't get anything for nothing, then you get his, this program will, works beautiful, and that's what this is all about. So, Do you accept Now, gentlemen, idea? before we go any further for a minute, let me do a station identification, right. and we have some questions when we're going to come back. I'm going to throw a song on here so all three of us can go get some coffee if we want to. And uh, with that said, this is this is the Veterans Day Radio News Reports. I'm your host, Stu Webb, and it is March the 24th, 2015, and my special guest is Lon Gibby of Gibby Media who's the uh, making the movie on Leo Wanta, and also Dr. Preston James, editor of Veterans Today. So, gentlemen, grab a cup of coffee. We'll play one song, and, folks, we'll be right back, and we're going to take uh, questions here from the chat room. So we'll just wait. Okay, we gentlemen. This is a very interesting information. Gentlemen, we are back, and uh, and uh, we are live again. Now, can I throw a couple questions out to you from the chat room here, Lon? Sure, you bet. Okay, it says, uh, one's from Matt. He says, ask Lon Gibby, is the entire want to bio still valid? Did Barnwell editorialize anything of note? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really good question. Uh, that, uh, <clears throat> that biography is available that was written by Marilyn Barnwell. Uh, she was the writer uh, of that biography is still available that Lee has made it available on his website wanttorevelations.com for anybody who wants to read it but my understanding is that uh, because of all the things that have happened so rapidly in the last you know 
nine to ten months or even the last 12 months. But there's quite a bit of information that uh, that needs to be updated on that. Now, uh, this uh, Marilyn was Lee's biographer, and she worked with Lee. Lee supplied all the documents and the background information that just like anybody would have been who's asking somebody to write his biography. But there's a lot of information that he did not give her, and there's a lot of information that's happened since that time. So this biography <coughs> needs to be totally re, uh, redone, and I know he's in the process of bringing in somebody else to uh, completely uh, update it and add all the new information that needs to be brought in and some of the new documentation that he, that he can now release <laughs> or he's willing to release now. Because there was quite a bit of stuff that he had. you got to remember, this is a guy that has a photographic memory. He has, and he has been able to preserve his documents, even though he was put in jail. His material, he, he had a system in place that preserved all of his documentation. It's just that he hasn't released it all. But when it's time, he will release it uh, when it's appropriate. And he's ready to release more. Uh, he has released more in the last 10, 12 months. Uh, and that biography, by the way, came out, I think, almost two years ago. So you can imagine how much more information is available now. Okay, now I want to add a couple of things because I'm familiar with Marilyn Barnwell. <clears throat> and she's a, she, in my opinion, she was a plant uh, on Lael. And I say that because uh, she tried to, you know, do something to cause a rift between Lael and I. After putting him on a show, she went nuts. And uh, this was a couple years ago or whatever it was, a year, year ago, something. Anyway, I sat and had to ask her approximately one year before that. I said, well, you're doing Leo's bile. <clears throat> and I had her on the phone. And I asked Marilyn, I said, uh, well, where's your, where do you come from, your background? Oh, I was a vice president at United Bank of Denver. And I said, United Bank? I said, well, what years? Oh, during the 80s and such and such, and early 90s or whatever it was. I said, well, do you remember those four murders of the so-called bank guards at United Bank? Uh, 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 no. I said, you don't remember that? You were working there. I said, it was all over the news. Uh, I don't know anything about it. Well, the story behind it was, is United Bank had become the new Silverado in Denver where Larry Mizell, the bank bailout scamster, and Leonard Millman, the bank bailout scamster, and the derivative, and the guys that own the Federal Reserve, the one of the 12 families, they uh, they had their United Bank frauds going on. Not only in oil and gas, limited partnership frauds up to yin-yang, and just totally destroying the FDIC, but they were laundering all the money, narcotics from 11 states, into that area. And boxes of money were being carried in there every day. They had millions of dollars every day in there. And they had four people on three shifts counting the money. And they had such a tight way of counting the money and such a tight way of each receipt being delivered up to Larry Mizell of, I dropped this box off over at United Bank and it had $1.5 million or $10 million in it, whatever the amount was. And he had the receipt, so they knew exactly. They came up missing twenty thousand dollars over over a period of two weeks, and they were splitting it up. These four money counters took five grand apiece. They sent John King, a Denver cop who had murdered one hundred and forty nine or one hundred and fifty. Now is what I've heard people in Denver for Mizell and Melman. They sent him in to murder him. They had him on camera going in the back door with his card, opening the place up, walking right in there, shooting and murdering all four people. The feds did nothing, covered it up. The Denver finally had to charge King. He laundered exactly, here's how much it was. I put in a note on, on, on the chat room a minute ago, but it was exactly $197,000 the next morning through m and Business Machines Company, which was a cutout for them, a supposedly cutout for the Bush Crime Syndicate, the Millman Mob, and, and, and so forth in Denver. And he kept 3000 When the cops caught him, he had 2900 and some odd dollars in cash on him, where he'd spent a little bit of the three grand. And uh, it was all over the news. 
and it was played for a long time. They actually got uh, got uh, John King off with a high-powered uh, Jewish attorney and bribing some people, got him off. But it turned out to be, and I won't get into detail too much, but everybody that's ever known about m l was an IRS sting operation because in 1997 they went back in and they got $100 million in fines against Mizell Millman, um, uh, the Denver Mayor Frederico Pena, who was Secretary of Department of Energy underneath Bill Clinton, had to resign because he was under indictment for taking a bribe from Phil Wynn, who had been under indictment and given a presidential pardon, never served time in jail for Robin Hood, part of their group. And uh, But uh, it, it, exactly two weeks before, after the grand jury convened, it was two weeks later he had to resign because he was under indictment. And uh, the mayor, Frederico Pena, paid a $1 million fine, folks. But he took a $2.5 million bribe. So he got to keep a million and a half of That's how lenient the government was against these people. They paid, Millman paid $80 million in fines and never went to jail. I've never heard of any such thing. The IRS mm. could not even bring them down, folks. That's how powerful they are. But that's where Marilyn Barnwell had ties. And she sat and denied on the telephone to me that she ever even knew of those four so-called bank guard murders. Anybody can look it up on the Internet. It was all over the place, uh, all over the mainstream wow. media. So that's Marilyn Barnwell. And then she tried to drive a wedge between myself and Leo after I started promoting him and put him on a couple of radio shows. And she went nuts. And they were trying yeah. to keep it. She was there as a plant to keep him at bay. And I'm aware of that. Now she runs around talking bad about him and all that whole bit. So I wanted a clarification of that. And yeah. uh, I've I've made my part of it as well because I can, uh, you know, uh, I see the Stooges all the time. They're always trying to come out of the woodwork. Uh, now we've got some other questions. What about World okay. War III? Being real close to World War III, Lon, are you uh, familiar with this? Yeah. Well, you know, you got to remember that part of the program of the Puppet Masters is to put on a big show, and it's a theatrical. So on the positive side, uh, you know, uh, well, I'm not saying this is positive. I'm just saying it may not be quite as serious as, uh, as they portray it. I mean, it's they, they are very good uh, at putting on uh, a, a, a theatrical show, <laughs> and that's what you're looking at right now. And And... There's a reason why they do that, of course. It gets everybody uh, worked up. It, they get some consideration economically in different ways. Uh, they can manipulate people, and and uh, and it gets uh, it, it serves their purposes to do that. So yes, I think we could. It, it, the where, way the way World War Three could happen is if somebody that uh, that is not uh, operating, you know, with a with a normal brain. You know, decides to do something on their own, and unfortunately, there are ways that people can do make mistakes. You know, uh, their missile system. I don't know how that how safe it is, and I'm not certain how safe ours is. You know, um, it, I, it does concern me that there could be some mistakes made. But what one thing for sure about World War Three is that if they continue to fiddle around and it does get rolling towards a war of that type. There's nobody that's going to be able to stop it, and and the damage that can be done uh, is is um, it's just you can't even calculate the, the loss in lives and, and innocent people, families, and children, and you know, and every single country that would be affected by it. And it's all and if they start it, it they won't be able to stop it. That's the thing. They think they can control this kind of stuff, this theatrical stuff they're doing, but this theatrical stuff could turn into a real war very quickly. And believe me, there's people that want to see that happen. So, well, they want to see yeah. that because of everything going on, the nationalization of the banks there in Russia and BRICS being formed. It's going to cut the Federal Reserve off its head off with what Leo has going on, what's going on in the way of a push for a cleanup here among the U.S. intelligence and U.S. military and so forth. It's happening now with the firing of 3,000 generals and colonels and admirals and captains and and uh, we're seeing a cleansing happening. And then, you know, Lon, I don't know that you're familiar with it. You go to justice.gov and you can see a, they popped a FBI head chief the other day, last uh, oh, few days ago, 
They got him on about 500 years. He's facing 500 years. And, uh, you know, there's been other things that have happened that we can't talk about that happened at CIA headquarters, from what we understand, uh, yeah. you know, regarding the, the, the drug smugglers and the drones. Uh, it's true. There, yeah. there's, there's a couple of things I can talk about. And, Go ahead, yeah. Doc. <clears throat> and I think, I think uh, Lon, you are 100% on the money that they play these theatrical games to stoke fear, and, and then they get, you know, they can chip more weapons, get more money. But th- there is a danger that they can lose control. And, and, and the real danger is if, if, if we go to World War III, it's going to be nuclear. It's going to be a different kind of nukes. But th- there's going to be two casualties immediately within, within 20 minutes. The first one is the capital cities of uh, Europe, including London, Paris, and uh, uh, Madrid and and Rome will be completely eradicated. They will Europe uh, and probably Germany too will be completely eradicated. Israel will be wiped off the face. It will be turned to glass, and 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 you can bet that um, there are people. There are people in the American defense establishment that really want that to happen. They want to test their new weapons. They believe they can win. And the scenario is, and I've heard this from people at a very high level, that there are, there are nutcases in both governments, in the Russian government and in the United States government. Putin is actually considered a moderate. But there are wackos in his military, old guys that, are, that, that want to test their stuff out. And we have people in our military. And, and both sides have a very well-developed underground system of bases with high-speed rail connecting them. Russia has a huge underground base in the Ural Mountains, top, top secret, that goes way down about three miles. It's supposed to be able to take any kind of direct nuclear hit. The Americans have 140 underground bases with a high-speed tunnel system uh, between one and three miles deep. But what they don't know is that the American system has been completely booby-trapped. So when these people go down there thinking, oh, we'll just let everything fly, we'll, we'll let the nukes fly, and then because the, the, you know, the Russians are using new stuff and we're using new stuff, the radiation will be gone after a month and there'll be no problem. We'll just go up and take over and, you know, we, the population that's left will be so dependent on us, they'll do whatever we want. We'll be in the driver's seat. We'll use robots. We don't need many people anymore. Um, I don't know if the Russian uh, system has, has been sabotaged or not, but I know the American system, the whole underground system is gone. And, in, and if and these people go down there to do this, they're never coming out. That's going to be a mausoleum. So with that mindset, this puts the Europeans in a very dangerous situation. I know that they're scared to death. The leaders of Europe are scared to death, and they're very, very motivated to make all kinds of deals to appease both sides. And you're going to see that uh, because of the dependency they have on Russia for the oil, oil and the natural gas and for the trade, you know, with these Russian sanctions, uh, the produce and the car parts and whatever have not been going into Russia, and it's, 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 it's hurting uh it's hurting Germany. Merkel is very concerned. So you're going to see a tremendous amount of pressure being put on America to keep their nose out of Europe's business and to make peace with the Russians. And so, but we are we are facing that possibility that some nutcases could you know start some incident. Maybe they could you know shoot down a, a European plane and try to link it to, you know to. Uh, the Russians or to Iran or whatever, but once it gets going, I, I think it, it would be hard to stop. Yeah, that's 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 what's terrifying, you know, for everybody to think about it. And then at the same time, while this is going on, we've got this destabilization effort that's working on even here in our own country that's trying to divide, uh, you know, our country by you know shifting the blame on you know towards police forces and. And people, you know, uh, misunderstandings that are going on here in our country. But then you've got ISIS and groups like that, and these terrorist groups that have somehow got arms. And, you know, one of the things about that that bothered Lee, just so you know, um, and many, many, many months ago, when all of that equipment that uh, was belonged to our country was just left, you know, for these folks to, to pick up and start using against us, um, Lee's idea was to go in and, and uh, if, if, if not to put troops back, to go in and get our equipment back. There was billions of dollars of equipment that we just left, and, and, uh, and of course that played right into this whole program because 
now we need more military equipment to replace that, and they got their equipment, and, and then we don't even know who the CIA is supporting. They might be supporting elements of some of these groups. So it's very difficult to understand who's who. It's the most confusing time in our entire history. Right now, it's, it's trying to figure out who in the world is behind things. Don't you agree? Well, yeah, yeah, no. I do. I, do. Well, I think we know. We have the answers. We know. You know, we know. Uh, of course, Jim Dean from Better State, the managing editor, he has he has people on. He has uh, reported, uh, Stu, that that uh, uh, these these in, in these stockpiles were left on purpose by you know the Americans when they left, to, and uh, that the uh, ISIS is, is being um, was set up and run by the Israelis and the Saudis and certain parts of. And they, and they were able to move in there and get these, and that uh, you know there there are a lot of arms that are being shipped in. They're opportunists who want to make money. So yes, I think it's a very dangerous situation. One thing I wanted you to get into a little bit, if you could, Lee, is that is that uh, we know um, we we published articles on BT about how there were uh, conspiracies to uh, assassinate Lee Wanta and and. Uh, um, <laughs> Threats that's made against group threats, and uh, we had to, we published a tape recording. Stu played it. I think. So. I, uh, matter of fact, I had it here. I was going to play it. Uh, you could. What do you guys uh, think? And what I wanted to say was, um, uh, Gordon Duff deserves credit because um, he has uh, uh, provided protection teams for because um, he has. Uh, uh, Provided protection teams for for um, Lee Wanta and Gordon. He has big muscle and he cares about Lee Wanta. And and I I I sleep well at night knowing that Lee is well protected. And I mean well protected. People have no idea the amount of muscle behind Lee Wanta right now. Plus, he is very loved all over the world and in our own intelligence and military. So. All these people that think they can get to Lee Wanta, good luck. Good luck. Uh, yeah. It's like, it's, it's like uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> there's an old saying, the 50 caliber with a scope is the three-mile solution. They can't even do that. So with yeah. that said, let's play this death tape real quick, folks. This is, a, a, this maybe you want to explain to him, Lon, who is on this tape. This is yeah. a former congressman, a senator, and a current U.S. senator, correct? That's correct. Yeah, and this happened, and uh, the re reason I know about it in detail, and even my name comes up briefly in this, because they, I was, I'm serving as Lee's communications director, so all of his communication, um, he has asked me to handle and kind of screen things, and uh, there was a lot of discussion going on between um, a, a former governor of Tennessee, Governor Sunquist, and and then uh, Sonstad, who is a state senator from Tennessee. Anyway, these two guys uh, were supposedly working in Lee's behalf, trying to assist him. Uh, if you ever wondered, by the way, whether Lee's money is real, then you, you answer the question after you hear this tape yourself and say, well, certainly a governor, a former governor, believed it because he was asking for $10 billion, okay? I mean, that's the bizarre thing about it. Uh, he was offered uh, to get out of jail uh, the Alford plea that was given to him in Wisconsin. And by the way, a very corrupt government, uh, state government there uh, during this time period. He was offered, uh, hey, we'll let you out of jail if you'll just take us to all of your money and give us all the codes to all of your funds. How's that? And here's a guy that was put in jail without a crime, an actual crime that they that that they could actually pin on him. It was absolutely it was he, it was all trumped up charges. So a I ten dollar wasn't it a ten dollar state income tax uh, yeah, charge? Was ten dollars. Yeah, dollars. It was fourteen thousand dollars, and he paid it three times. We have to we actually have to check that it was paid, and, and somebody got the money. <laughs> okay, so if, if any of you out there, because I'm so tired of people. Trying to say, oh, is this guy's a fake? You know, he's, he's somebody said that he was a, you know, that he was a snake oil salesman. They don't know we want it, and they don't understand why would a governor be asking, trying to hold out to, to extort ten billion dollars out of him? 
And all these people, even to this day, they're still calling him all the time, waiting in line, thinking they're going to get something because they knew Lee 10 years ago or did something they thought was instrumental in him getting his money back. It just shows you how corrupt the whole thing is. And, and that's very true. I mean, I, I could speak some names here of uh, Juan yeah. Stooge that was, uh, you know, went around claiming to be CIA and he wasn't and uh, the whole bit, Tom Hennigan. And he's actually yeah. nothing more than he was a stooge for, you know, in the campaign for uh, for Al Gore. And I respect Al. He tried to. Well, uh, to, well he, I'll tell you something. Made, you know, I, I actually have a document. <clears throat> and I'm gonna, we're going to release it that shows uh, four people that were holding that. One of them was expecting $14 trillion. Okay. And another one was expecting 10 Lee was going to end up with $4.6 trillion. They already divided all his money up. <laughs> I mean, and you want to know how these folks they're all, are. Yeah, they're all sitting out there playing the carrot game. Yeah. You know, As I so, told Leo, Leo, one of these days, hey, send him a carrot. And like you said, you know, he has his carrot and a little bit of uh, French dip sent to him. Yeah, exactly. Now, here's a little background on this recording you're about to hear. Remember, uh, they, these gentlemen are trying to, uh, they were trying to get a hold of me, so they called me, and I, and I said, um, I'll, I'll get with Lee and see if we can get get you guys together because they, they wanted to talk to him about... They had several conversations which I was on the line with him on. Lee, when I talked to Lee, he said, he said don't don't take their calls. He goes, uh, I, don't, don't take their calls. So I didn't. So they called me about four times that day. This was on uh, Labor Day. Trying to get through to me and see if I could give him any information you know, about what's going on. And they they got frustrated, and next thing you know, they called. They decided to call and leave a message on Lee's on Lee's ambassador phone in Washington D.C. And the phone system uh, didn't. Uh, they thought they had left the message, and they were done. <laughs> well, guess what? This is the message that was left that they didn't realize was being recorded. So this is a real look, a smoking gun. I look right into how the puppet gate and puppet master folks operate okay remember these are if you don't believe that we ha doesn't have any funds listen to them tripping all over themselves trying to figure out a way they're going to extort and threaten his life and to get their 10 billion dollars okay so that's that's my my description of what you're going to hear okay okay well that said here we'll play the tape go to go to cook phil, phil. Oh, oh. And that's about a four-hour drive, and then three and a half, and then we're then we're going to drive to Knoxville. I got a doctor's appointment at two, I think, tomorrow afternoon in Knoxville, and then we'll be home okay. tomorrow evening. But I'll be in the car all day long. So okay, I'll uh, I'll work on this deal, and then I'll let, I'll I'll keep in touch with you. Sounds good. Okay. What's your thinking? What's, what's your thinking? He obviously doesn't want to talk to us. No. I don't, I'm sure that Ron would have called me back. Yeah. Except he had to have talked to Lee or he would oh, have called me back. And Lee's the one that fired now not to call me back. Yeah. Well, why would he act that way? Does he blame us for Maryland, or is he just we're just spare spare fuel right now? He doesn't need us anymore. I don't and know. And doesn't want to pay us. I don't know. Well, well after, looks, we, after we get done with this deal, then we'll decide what the next move. Because I want yeah. half of that money now. Uh, you think you got any chance of getting it? Well, we're going to find out. Yeah. Well, you know, um, it's one thing not to pay us in the future, but it's not. It's another thing not to pay us for the past. Well, we earned it once. You know, that's yeah. my point. We're yeah. doing the second time for free because we only get paid once. Right. I mean, I had that all done two years ago, and he well, screwed up. And if he had yeah. quit sending all those damn fucking emails out, are you on speaker? No, no. Okay, if I'd have quit sending all those emails, he'd have quit sending all those emails out, we wouldn't have 90% of our trouble. And he's still sending that crap out. I know. He's he's insulting and scaring people. 
He doesn't understand the word stealth, and in my world, you better know what that word means. Yeah. You don't want to know, you want people to forget your lies. Well, he, he owes us all of it, but we'll settle for half of it just to get right. out of this, just to get away and forget about it. He won't ever have to hear it, worry about us again. Right. But he does owe us that money. So, anyway, and, and if he does, if he says he doesn't, then... Then I, I'm going to ask him, what does he think, what do you think, Lee, that you owe us? Anything? For all that work? Anything? See well, what he says. Yeah, I can even say anything you want. I don't uh, care anything you want. All right. Well, let's figure out what, what's happening. Nice old, we Sheldon, ain't nice old Sheldon anymore. Well, we'll just have to, my soul children are going to have to ask his friends to help. Yeah, that's no problem. Yeah, and uh, the question is going to be how fast can they act? Well, I'd say pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. Huh. And they have ways of finding out where he is and how to reach him? Uh, I'm sure that's not a problem. I don't know how they do all that, but I don't. That yeah, that well, you don't want to know. I don't want to know some of that. No. But does he have government protection? Who? Please. Oh. Uh, they know that, too, I guess, huh? He claims to, but I, you know, uh, I would if it, I would hope he does, but, it, you know. Yeah. If he does, he's... I just can't imagine anybody as smart as he is is going to be screwing around over $10 billion, you know? Or even five. Or five, even, you know? Yeah. Huh. If I had that kind of money, I'd... And dealing with us, so I'd give him 10 so fast to make your head spin. Just get rid of me. Me too. Me too. Oh, but we'll I, give him the know, choice. I, eh? You want rid of us? Give us five, and we'll call it even. Yeah, that's it. No less. No less. That's it. There's no negotiations. One time offer. Take it or leave it. There you go. No, not take it or leave it. <laughs> no. You no. better take it. I mean. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's pretty serious. This yeah, is serious. But we got to do it this week because uh, I, no, I, I can't. Yeah, I understand. I can't. I can't go on any longer. I know. So we'll just go to it. I mean, this was a once in a lifetime thing I got together for us. In the yeah, I know. I know. And, uh, I don't want to lose that. Uh, I don't want to lose it either. So. And it's getting okay. better since I first talked to you. Yeah. You know, it's getting better by the month. Huh. Do you think he'll offer us? I, I just don't think he'll offer us anything. Well, we'll just have to wait and see, Donald. Okay, sounds good. Okay, I'll, I'll be you. I'll, I'll be uh, I'll be ready any time tomorrow. So I'll okay. be in the car. So call. Thanks. Okay, bye. So. Okay, what you heard, ladies and gentlemen, was uh, they forgot to hang up the three-way when they called, and it was left on Leo's recorder. And this was the death threat. Excuse me, I wasn't even able to be heard, I don't think. Uh, I forgot to turn my mic back on on Skype here. Uh, that was a death threat, and that's a former yeah. congressman and former senator. And uh, yeah. they mentioned a current U.S. senator. And uh, yep. they thought the mic was off or they, they were disconnected on the three-way when they left that on Leo's recording. That was kind of a God-given recording. And by the way, these two, these two pieces of work, pieces of crap, immediately the next day, I believe it was, or two days later, the FBI and other agencies, I believe it was, showed up at their front door to arrest them. And uh, after charges were filed by Leo with the Justice Department on this, 
and uh, they were already uh, on their way to the hospital. They were having heart attacks. Is that right, Lon? Well, that's what I understand. I can't verify that because uh, I didn't hear that personally, but uh, I heard that they had uh, some form of uh, medical issues that precluded them from from uh, being able to go in. And to right to this day, I think they, they're still using that tactic. But um, here's here, the interesting thing about this, that, um, you know, there were other folks that were aware that, that they were closely with, of course, that you just, that are you know, weren't on that conversation, but there were conversations that took place between Lee and uh, Corker, uh, and he is the, the congressman, I guess, that's over the uh, the uh, Foreign Relations Committee. But um, and he's wanted, real, he's a real criminal, Corker. Yeah. he's an Israeli well, stooge to its max. Well, I, I wanted, I just wanted everybody to understand that, in addition to the funds that that Lee, you know, as a as a Private citizen amassed in the in behalf of uh, of his own uh, corporations. Uh, he, he amassed twenty seven trillion, which is now up to much more than that. Um, it's still his it's still his money. He also had two thousand metric tons of, of gold bullion, which which everybody knows that people were aware that he has, and and I've seen the documents on it. And that gold is his gold, and that. That's worth more than uh, uh, ninety. It's around, I think it was ninety billion dollars right now. That the price of gold is at, at, at around one thousand four hundred dollars an ounce. And Bill Gates, you know, he's the wealthiest man in the United States, and he's worth seventy nine uh, billion. And this just leaves gold, which he still has. It's his in his name. He controls. And he has not released it because there's a reason. I mean, his life would be was at risk. Everybody was trying to get their hands on it. He was told in a in a conversation um, by uh, Corker that he should just throw in his 2,000 metric tons of gold uh, to help, you know, as collateral or, or as uh, to show good faith and to get his money back. How's that? Yeah, but, that's, that's. So I'm, so I'm just telling. I'm just telling you that's the kind of stuff that's going on, and it's uh, related to money, power, and everybody's hidden agenda. Uh, that isn't necessary. It's not in the interest of, of, of the average American person out there. I just so, want to throw something at you for your own yeah. edification, Lon. Is that <clears throat> Larry Mizell's worth nearly thirty trillion? Leonard Millman's worth a hundred trillion. Daddy Bush is worth a hundred trillion. Uh, Meyer Rothschild, these are all people living in the United States, except for Melman. He went and hid out in Cuba, and he money launders now with Mitt Romney, all the drugs, uh, faked his death here in the U.S. But Meyer Rothschild, these are the Council of Twelve, the Twelve Disciples of Satan they're referred to, the Illuminati. Meyer Rothschild out of New York, he's worth about $100 trillion. Henry Kissinger's worth around $100 trillion. Uh, 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 Grace, Bill Grace of Grayson Company is worth about 70 to 80 trillion. Uh, Anzwar Ben Shri, who's in Israel, the head rabbi, he's worth about 80 to 100 trillion. Pope Benedict, they say, is worth about 40 trillion. He's the one that got kicked out of the Pope, his Popeymon ship, uh, for having sex with little boys and girls. And he's actually charged in two other countries. They have arrest warrants for him, but he's, he hides out at the Vatican. And then uh, you have uh, Patrick Wu, uh, spelled W-U or Y-U. Uh, he operates out of New York and Dallas. He's up there in the $100 trillion range. Uh, the, this is, and, and Paul Warburg out of Europe, uh, they're, all, they're all nearly $100 trillion each. Now, these yeah. are the men who have taken over the country and the economy. We're in 81 for people's edification. The General Accounting Office, the watchdog of the, of the U.S. Congress, and the control of currency estimated that 1% of the population was in control of 20% of the U.S. economy. Now, in June of 2012, they pegged that number at 95% and that it had reduced from 1% of the population that 400 men were in control of 
95% of the U.S. economy, and they were making more money per year, those 400 men, than half the entire 330 million population we have. So that gives you an idea of the true numbers here. You know, when you hear yeah, these that's, bogus that's numbers of, of, you know, the Walton family or, you know, Walmart and so-and-so and, and Gates and all the different ones. And then if you take the Walton family, oh, they supposedly have, you know, X number of billions of dollars in stock and all that. Tell you who set them up. It was Millman who set them up along with Daddy Bush. And the first thing they do when they set them up in business like this, they issue them their stock for their part of of setting the company up, and they turn around and have them sign the back of the stock certificates to where they can be transferred at any moment back to them, where they have total control of these people. And they got boxes of everybody's stock. So when you hear that Walton's has X number of billions of dollars in stock, the family, they really don't have it. Anything they buy thereafter from their own earnings that they make from the companies, then that's their stock. But the initial yeah. stock goes right in their pocket, right in the boy's pocket who finance them. That's how they hide it. And well, there you go. Yeah, yeah so. it, it just goes, it just well, that's, 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 a, that's a good example of just how it works at that, at that elite level. But, but let me just say this, that um, people are very confused, you know, who's who in the American uh, politics. And I, instead of calling them po- politicians, I call them politicians sometimes because they're not, you know, po- po- politicians used to be a good word, and po- politics was, well, the po- political process was a good thing, and it still is if it's done properly. Uh, but what's happened is it's been corrupted. And so you can't tell uh, that who's a Democrat and who's a Republican or... Or who's, who's got, the, who's a conservative or who's a liberal because they're all doing the same thing. I mean, why do you think these tax money is out of control where there's no, uh, there's no, Congress hasn't come up with any rules to control the spending on campaigns. And all that money is just going insane. And, and there was a, uh, as you know, pork barreled amount put into the, into, uh, one of our recent bills where they, they finagled that in. Uh, in the immigration, how did that get in there so that they could have the ability of spending unlimited amount of money on these, uh, and putting money into these campaigns? Well, that all goes to the media, of course, and they win, they couldn't have, regardless of who's running. But I'm just, I'm just trying to point out that, that the corruption, we're not attacking the Republicans or Democrats, we're just attacking corruption in its, in its form, uh, in its form that it's in everywhere. In different organizations, and uh, we've got to get people that run for office that are honest and you know will follow that, that are trustworthy and loyal. You know all the what I like to say they should follow the Boy Scout rule. You know, Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, curious, kind, cheerful, obedient, brave, thirsty, brave, clean, and reverent. And they should follow something like that uh, in order to to really run for office. They shouldn't run for office if they're interested in in having a career. Or getting lots of money, or getting special set aside allocations, they should run for office because they love our country and they want to serve. And, that's and maybe this next election we can have some of that. I think we're going to have a, a new presidential candidate named Gordon Duff, and all of our listeners, we're going to ask them all to get out there and get the signatures required. Uh, it will be an effort. Uh, we will get it done to where we can get him on the ticket. I don't know whether it's going to be the Democratic or Republican ticket. But I love Gordon Duff's uh, uh, statements he's made already on previous shows. The first thing he would do, would after sworn in, he would arrest the Supreme Court justice, take the Bible out of his hand, have him arrested, all the rest of them, arrest the entire Congress and Senate, and he would hold them on their charges that they are aware of, that they deserve those charges that have not been laid yet. And he would make every cop in the land take a lie detector test. He would arrest half, he would arrest all the federal judges and prosecutors. And of course, he said that he would give me the job of being the hand judge and he'll give uh, Doc the job of being the prosecutor. So, <laughs> my opinion is, and when Doc brings him up there, and we've talked about this on the air, when Doc brings him up with the charges, it's going to be, how do you plead, guilty or not guilty? And no matter how they plead, I'm going to give them the opportunity to go off with the federal agents and tell us where the hidden uh, loot is that they have taken. And if they don't start speaking, they if they get the short rope or the long rope, depending on how much they say. And that's the way it's yeah. going to be. And you know what the short rope is. 
yeah, that's where they know, hang and, and jump around, and they're they're choking to death for five minutes before they die. Give them a little bit of action, and we'll make sure the hole they dropped or they can bang their head like they did in the Nuremberg trials. I'm just kind of, I've got an attitude anymore, Lon, and my attitude is like, okay, I may be a Christian, and I haven't killed anybody yet, but I have this attitude when it comes to this evil, God hates evil, and it's okay for us to hate evil because he hates evil. Yeah. And we're here to clean it up, all of us. If we don't well, clean we, it up we, and he steps yeah. in, it's the end of the planet. Yeah. That's what's everybody, going to end up everybody happening. Has a duty, everybody has a duty to stand up and be counted and not just to be sit there and, and complain and wring your hands. And, and you can stand up and vote. You can, you could, you could let your voice be heard. Um, it's not, it's not always, it's kind of a scary thing sometimes to, to, to expose yourself, to get your word out, but people do need to, to need to speak up for what's right and, and, and honest and true. And, um, I wanted to remind everybody too, is that when Lee does get his funds, which I believe he will, uh, this is eventually this is going to work out where there's, the, there's only one direction they have to go, they need to go, they, that they will go, and if they don't have a choice, they will get these funds back, converted back to him. Our national debt, which is $18 trillion, it doesn't exist when we, because he, he pays his taxes, and by the time he puts his funds back in that he's been mandated to by President Reagan, by the way, he still works for President Reagan, just remember that. Lee is not doing this on his own. This is what President Reagan mandated him to do. The national debt will be eliminated overnight. Our, he's going to take on the trade deficit, uh, deficit with China himself. He'll cover that, so we'll owe him. And I believe it will be a lot better interest rate than we're paying now. And he is going to create a high-speed rail system like no other country's ever seen, right here in our own country. And so can you imagine what that's going to do as far as creating jobs, creating hope, you know, getting people excited about their, about work. And, uh, people, people everywhere should see a, a, a real, uh, you know, positive future as we look forward instead of looking at all of this negative, you know, and the potential of destroying ourselves. And so we need this to happen. I hope you guys out there, everybody will consider who Lee wants to really is, what he's trying to do. Give him a chance. He's a good man. And I personally, you know, am doing what I can do. I'm just a small business owner, working hard, and, and uh, I'm trying, trying hard to help because I believe this is the direction that our country needs to go uh, to get back to where we need to be. Now, I did transfer, you know, there's statements in the chat room here, and uh, you're aware, and I'm aware, and I can't say, and Doc is aware because he was on the phone with Leo and I, and we know that that money was transferred. And we know that one bank wanted to take $2 trillion it was transferred to the $32 trillion as a processing fee, and he told them to go to hell. But he's got well, the money. Uh, yeah. The government's yeah, in control of the money now, and uh, Leo's money, and uh, everything's set on go. And for those out here listeners, because we've only got about a minute or two or three, we could run all night long if you wanted to, but, uh, you know, two hours is enough. It comes down to that this money is there, and everything's on go, and things are, are we have our military uh, involved as well, as well as the various agencies of the government. Uh, good guys are all involved in this, many agencies. And uh, it is going down in the next 90 to, to, uh, days to six months. All this yeah. will come to pass. And yeah. all we're doing is informing you because there will be an adjustment in the U.S. dollar when this happens. We said it here just earlier in the program because of BRICS. When this pops, the U.S. dollar, the Federal Reserve, will tank, folks. And uh, so, you know, don't be left out in the code hanging with those in your pocket and, yeah. uh, and, and the banks. So it, it will be an adjustment, 30, 60-day adjustment period. The American people will go friggin' crazy not knowing what's going on because they don't understand what is happening. And with that yeah. said, uh, uh, you know, let's try to wrap it up in the next five minutes if we can, guys. Oh, you bet. Well, I was just going to say that, um, you know, the process of healing anything that's that's diseased or, you know, you've got a, a, a an infection of any kind, you know, that sometimes it has to be 
uh, it, it never heals unless you can get the venom out or, you know, it pops and, and then eventually it, it, it can be healed. It, it was kind of what about the experience. You know, it's going to be a little uh, difficult for a while, uh, obviously, when things start to, it's scary to see. You know, you remember the stock market is not, uh, is a, is a, is a puppet show in the sense that it's, it's, it's propped up just like a movie set you'd see in Hollywood. You know, you've got a great facade on the front, but there's nothing backing it up behind. And they and you know, it's really strange that, that groups like, uh, you know, Stan, you know, Morgan Stanley and Chase Bank would be together into one organization where you have a stock company. And then also you got a bank that's also part of that, and they seem to get lots of money put in there so they can get all these fees and stuff. And they, there's been a lot of money, trillions of dollars, given to these organizations. But it's for if everyone can just be patient, weather it out. Um, this is the healing process that has to take place to get us back to where we need to be, and to reset our our monetary system, to get it operating in reality instead of uh, on derivatives based uh, Ponzi type schemes that we have now so um, that's what we have to look forward to and I'm I, I know it's um, it's scary you know, it's not it's a scary time but it's it's very also it's a very positive time and Lee um, has, they postponed getting his funds back for one for because you if you could imagine how would you like to make uh, do you realize how much interest you would make every minute if you had that money in your account I mean every hour every day, every week. The longer they've held on to it, the more they've been able to use those funds. And um, and so they, but, you know, they owe him more money every day, too, because this is all out enough. But the best thing they can do is to get it back to the rightful owner. He will do what he was mandated to do from President Reagan, which is honorable, uh, yeah, I believe, is what President Reagan was trying to do. And um, and there'll be some uh, some new opportunities that we haven't seen before. It will bless the lives of uh, millions and millions of people in our country, as well as our neighbors. Now we, we got some. Our... Go ahead. We uh, we have some uh, statements from the chat room and knowing what to do when the dollar collapses. Uh, you know, uh, Gordon mentioned it uh, the other day uh, on one of the programs. Go to an FDIC insured account. Remember, uh, these checking accounts in America are no longer FDIC insured. I believe savings accounts are. I don't have any money, but I believe that they still are with the banks. So that way the government will <clears throat> insure it. Uh, Leo told me that he believes that gold's going to go way high uh, soon uh, when all this transfer is over. Uh, so, you know, that's the reason he's sitting on so much gold himself uh, to be able to do this. So... Take it yeah. for what it's worth. It's just advice, folks. You know, it's good to, you know, you got money in the bank. It's good to stock up that food and the water and, and the toilet paper and all the necessities you're going to need because we will go through a 30 to 60 day uh, uh, time frame that uh, there will be an adjustment in this the way people uh, uh, think and come to reality. So I hope I've answered the questions from the chat room. And, Lon, I want to thank you very much for being on. And, Doc, you got any last statements? No, I want to thank Lon. I've worked with him for a while. I have a lot of respect for what he's doing, and he's doing a very thorough uh, step-by-step job. He doesn't overreact to upsetting things. He deals with things in a very well-balanced way, and I'm really impressed with his work so far. So thanks for everything, Lon. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Again, it's a real honor to be able to to work on this project and to, to try to get the, the story out to the public. <clears throat> and, Lon, you have, a, you have a media business. You make commercials. uh uh, you're making this movie. Uh, if anybody ever wants to do any commercials and they want to advertise on Thursday Radio, they can get a hold of you or if they're advertising someplace else, correct? Absolutely. You give me media group, uh, 35 years, years in the business, and we have clients all over the country in different, almost any kind of industry you can think of. We have some major, major Fortune 500 accounts as well as mom and pop shops. So we produce training, educational materials, as well as uh, marketing, TV spots, video elements, uh, web web uh, technology as well. So that's what we do. And uh, do you have a website you can give out? Yeah, it's Gibby, it's GibbyMedia.com. And GibbyMedia.com. And uh, we also have a, a phone number at, uh, at 
at uh, area code 509-467-1113 if uh, we could be of assistance to anyone that needs any media-related content produced. Okay, great. And, Doc, you're up on VeteransToday.com, and you can find Doc's work uh, on my site as well, StuWeb.com. You can click on that link in the left column where it says Dr. Preston James, but yours is VeteransToday.com forward slash author forward slash Jims and James, Preston James. We have several Jims up on Veterans Today. And uh, so you can find Dr. Preston James' work, and you've got some mass stories out there, Doc. And probably one of your biggest hits lately is the Kazarian Mafia. You want to give everybody the title on that one? Yeah, that's the uh, hidden history of the incredibly evil Kazarian Mafia. That's that's based on the uh, research of uh, Mike Harris, who's a financial editor of Veterans Today. And it and and I will say it's it, it's going to go down in history as some of the greatest research ever done. Mike was really on top of this. The thing went viral on the internet, and uh, it's changing everybody's view of corruption. So. Mike uh, deserves highest commendation for that one. <clears throat> okay, and with that said, I guess uh, I guess we're going to call quits here for this evening until we get to some more hosts on, folks, which we have uh, Don Fox coming on Sunday night. He'll be on uh, in the uh, p.m. time from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, Sundays, and uh, <clears throat> he's an expert on 911, among other things, and... Uh, Lorraine Fenton will be uh, starting up the 1st of April, and uh, we have some other hosts that I'm not going to announce yet are coming on as well, so keep listening. This is the Veterans Day News, uh, Veterans Day Radio News Reports, uh, and I'm your host, Stu Webb, and my special guest, Ben Lon Gibby and uh, Dr. Preston James, and with that said, good night, folks. Have a good one. Good night. Good night.